Hi, my name is Lea Pemal and I will present our paper Good Days, Bad Days, Understanding the Trajectories of Technology Use During Chronic Fatigue Syndrome on behalf of my co-author Sarah Homewood. Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, Myalgic Encephalomyelitis, MECFS, is a chronic illness that impacts the whole body, including the neurological, autonomic, neurodoctrine and immune system. MECFS is a long-term illness that often persists for years or even decades. People with MECFS experience extreme fatigue that is not improved with rest and may lead to individuals being unable to work or even confined to bed. This is a very under-researched area within HCI and the medical field more generally. MECFS gained interest in relation with COVID. It was there way before, but as a contentious topic, still have not been taken seriously. It can be described as a dynamic disability that changes from day to day in response to different triggers and inherent aspects of the illness. Main symptoms are fatigue, sensory sensitivities and cognitive limitations involving, for instance, confusion, vertigo, problem with memory. Symptoms may get worse after mental or physical activity or exertion. We conducted semi-structured remote interviews with seven participants diagnosed with MECFS over 20 to 90 minutes with a particular emphasis on how the ever-changing nature of their symptoms influenced their use and experience of technologies over time. We wanted to understand what barriers they found to the accessibility of existing technologies. Recruitment and retainment of participants with MECFS influenced by the cost of the research in relation to energy levels. The challenges we encountered also provides valuable pointers for future research that would help this community being studied. Most related research in the field explores how technologies are used by people with MECFS to replace in real life social interaction which would be too tiring with online ones. Other various examples look at how subtracting can help manage symptoms. There is one paper. Discussions around accessibility and technologies tend to only take place in relation to disabilities rather than chronic illnesses. 33% of papers are about people with visual impairments. Our scoping study offers insight into an under-understood illness and takes a holistic and inductive approach to accessibility by looking at the total experience of individuals with everyday technologies. This is an approach that is inspired by Avi Carvel's Phenomenology of Illness that says that we should study the whole experience of illness to understand it and not just basing our understanding on a medical model. Our qualitative study reveals how the use of technology is significantly affected by the symptoms experienced and progression of illness. People with MECFS have found ways to adapt and use technology to meet their fluctuating needs, either by adopting, adapting or abandoning technologies. Participants use technologies to replace themselves by using robotic land mower and to help them hack their energy levels or, in this example, their care partner's energy level, P6. We've got a robotic land mower, mostly for my husband, so we didn't have to spend his limited energy on it and he could do some of the things that I couldn't do anymore. Technology has tested our participants' limitation. These participants also use the built-in li limitations of technologies to help them manage their own technology use. On a bad day, they would force themselves to only use their phone. P4. When I'm on my phone, the only thing I can really do is watch YouTube. When I'm on my computer, there's like a bunch of other things that I could do and that I don't really have the energy for. Sometimes I get lured into doing these things. Screens were a big limitation for many of our participants in different ways. They often manage this through avoiding large screens on bad days. P2. If I'm nauseous, just movement in front of my eyes, TV will make me feel worse. These participants de deliberately has one dumb phone and one smartphone to use in different contexts to avoid her getting overwhelmed. P2. 
When you have brain fog, you have problem concentrating, you have problem multitasking and processing information. Having a smartphone would just add on to those things. This participants reduces the volume of the devices and use technology to overcome the barriers from sensitivity to sound. P3. When I'm with somebody where there's a lot of noise, I put in my AirPods, they have a sound reduction. We found that our participants' technology use changes in relation to the severity of their illness from day to day. On good day, they would do things outside and social in person, so technology would be useless. On bad days, technology would be used to compensate for being too tired to move around and socialize. And on very bad days, the accessibility barriers of technology would mean that it would be useless, as using them would make symptoms worse. We propose the model of trajectories of technology use to illustrate how different symptoms and different fluctuations in symptoms inform which technology they use and how. We first encapsulate the initial user intention. Then the next stage of the, is the process of consulting the state of the body and illness through introception, where the bodily senses are used to gather information such as the level of fatigue, pain, sensory sensitivities and cognitive limitations. The outcome finally informed the trajectory of technology use over a good day and bad day variable. Rather than predict people's behavior, our model maps dynamics intersecting fluctuating bodies and technology use, one shaping another. For example, P2 reflected on her cognitive abilities that day and that assessment to choose which kind of game to play that day. We propose that some of the way our participants use technologies to make the, the world around them more accessible points to new design openings. For example, P3 used noise cancelling headphones to lower the volume of the voices of friends and family to a bearable level. This repurposing of technologies points to new type of accessible technologies. P1 used the BBC News and Instagram profile scouting for interesting articles in short form so she could decide on which one spends their limited energy reading in full. So we propose the exploration of technologies that would enable users to scale up or down the complexity of information. A large theme in our finding was how screen-based devices are a barrier to people with MECFS as they found the bright light size and movement of animations on screens trigger symptoms. It therefore seems promising to explore the value of non-screen-based devices as more accessible technologies for people with symptoms related to MECFS. Non-screen-based interactions have been developed for users with visual impairment, but not specifically for people with symptoms such as sensory sensitivities and fatigue, due to the fact that people with chronic illnesses such as MECFS have other symptoms influencing the accessibility of technologies. These existing non-screen-based technologies would have to be first assessed and then perhaps adapted. Our main contribution is how our research illustrated how current technologies do not reflect the changes our body goes through over time during chronic illness. These changes influence users' needs, motivations and how accessible technologies are to them. In future research, we will build on this preliminary knowledge by getting a deeper understanding on how fluctuations in the symptoms of MECFS influence the trajectories of technology use. This will require us to co-design research methods that are not too tiring for participants. In consequent research project will then use these findings in the co-design of more accessible everyday technologies for people with MECFS based on their levels of fatigue, sensory sensitivities and cognitive limitations. This will also lead to a better understanding of fatigue in HCI. Uh, this research will relate to many other illnesses and life processes that also relate to fatigue, such as stress, depression, other chronic illnesses and life processes such as menopause, pregnancy and aging. Thank you very much for listening. Please get in touch if you're interested in our work.